Lord Church, I come tonight, this evening, just with thanks. Great thanks. Great thanks. Because this is so ordained by God. This has been more of a blessing to me. Just been in his presence soon as I walked in the door. Then I was led to the upper room. With a mighty Russian wind came in with a word. With a word. When God is in the middle, when his spirit resides, great things happen. And church, you have a great purpose ahead of you. It's so apparent, I feel it in the spirit. He sent the word. Because there's work, great work, for this branch of Zion to do. Just agree with it and allow God to use you. Just tell him yes. It's about to do some great things, church. Hallelujah. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I do want to give honor where honor is due. So I thank God for my pastor. Pastor William L. King from Mount Mona's First Baptist Church, who allowed me to come out. Because we did have a second service, but he knew that God needed me here. Amen. So I do thank and praise God for such a spirit led leader. And for the angel of this house, God bless you for allowing me to come in your sacred space. Of God. Awesome man of God. Stay true to your pastor. Pray for him. Let no harm come out of your mouth towards your pastor. Bless him with words. Bless him in your deeds. Because God has given him a vision. Amen. So I just want to take a few seconds just to pray and thank God our Father my lover, my Lord. I adore you, God. So grateful for this opportunity. For I realize it's none of me, God, but all of you. I pray, God, that your anointing comes in and breaks every you. Set the captives free. Set our souls on fire, God. And we may say yes to your will and yes to your will. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And in his name, Father, we say amen. 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 The word is coming right from your thing. Luke, the 23rd chapter. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong thing. Chapter 13. 10 through 13. Let's see if I'm going to read that whole one. And I am. Because we need to know how important the word is. So just leave it up to the preacher to preach. Amen. You got to know the word for yourself. I don't know if it's proper protocol if you stand for the reading of the word or not, but I ask that you do stand as I read the word of God. Amen. There were present at that season 
some who told him about the Galileans whose blood, I'm sorry, I'm reading from the New King James Version, amen, so it may read a little different from your King James. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans? Because they suffered such things. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. For those 18 on whom the tower in so long fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. He also spoke this parable. Oh, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, well, but if not after that, you can cut it down. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. The word of God has been blessed. So you want to walk in freedom. You ever heard, be careful what you pray for? Well, in order to walk in freedom, you first must understand the root of the word, which is free. Webster describes free as not imprisoned, nor enslaved, not affected or limited by specified condition or circumstance, not subject to external restraints, unobstructed, not bound, fastened or attached. And so freedom is the state of being free. The state of walking in the right of enjoying all the privileges, all the benefits, all the promises, all the blessings of being in a citizenship. And we are members of the family of God, am I right? Yes. And so God just wants to take a second to remind us of who we are. Yes. And whose we are. Yes. We are children of the Most High. And that comes with some liberty. For whom the Son set free yeah. is free indeed. Yes. Does anybody want to be free? Yes. You know, history has a way of repeating itself. Yes. And one of the truths about the period of slavery is when the bill was signed setting the slaves free, many of them had been bound for so long, they decided to stay slaves because they knew no other way. In other instances, the, the news of freedom took so long to travel to everybody that many were free and didn't even know they were free. And do you know these facts of history tend to relate to the state of the children of God as well? As a child of God, we must know that Jesus came to set us free. Free from the power of sin and death. Yet many of us remain bound. Remain bent over. Remain living defeated lives. This isn't just a woman's day evening service. This is your spiritual emancipation. 
participation right. yeah. 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 spiritual freedom yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Come on, right. Help us go. emancipation proclamation yeah. God is going to do it in here today yeah. he so strategically yeah. placed your thing in between what we first him talking about people who were trying to figure out and decide whose sin was worse. Uh -huh. And that's what the church is bound to today. So he strategically placed the story of the woman with an infirmity in between the story of people always trying to figure out what sin is worse. Then he comes behind so you're going to have to do some reading. Then he comes behind the woman's story with the infirmity and he talks about the kingdom. He talks about the parable of the Lord Jesus, my God. He talks about the parable of the mustard seed. Just, just how the mustard seed looks so insignificant. Yeah. But when it grows, ah. it affects the whole garden. Yeah. And so, God wants us to know today that we've got to get unbound from being such a religious, churchified state. Yeah. Always trying to figure out whose sin is worse than the other. Jesus didn't die on the cross and free us 
for us to possess fancy cars, on, big houses, designer clothes, and a lot of bling. Jesus didn't free us to be so bound to only live and to possess things. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I don't preach against success because God wants us to be successful. But if that's the only reason why you win this thing, baby, then you need to, to let it go. Because God wants to use you to do something great. He wants you to go through this world and change some things. He wants you to do some shaking up. He wants you to live against the grain. But we are so used to going with the flow. Don't want to be talked about. Don't want to be looked at as the one, the different one. But God wants us to be different. He freed us that we would be about our Heavenly Father's business which is bringing his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. And the text that you have chosen for your theme is Jesus' way of making that very clear. Yes. Walking in freedom. Yeah. To be able to walk in freedom, I have to help you understand some of the highlights in your focal scripture. But it's not enough to stay there. God wants to take us further. But he does want us to understand the highlight point that believers can come under the attack of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. He will seek for ways to bind our lives and to hinder us from being all that God wants us to be. That some type of infirmity, which means weakness and not sickness, can enslave us and cause deformity. This infirmity can cause us to become all bent over and all bent out of shape. This infirmity can cause us pain. This infirmity by no means can we deliver ourselves from it. But it's not enough to just highlight that fact. It's not enough to highlight that God cares so much for us that he may not come when we want him, but he's always right on time. See, that's what that story is about. It's about how compassionate God is. It's about how in the midst of thousands, hundreds of people, he can look past them and see you and know your hurting, know your pain and know your struggle and know that you're up late in the midnight hour. He can know that you are having trouble and time paying those bills and raising those kids by yourself and going on that job every day and dealing with this issue and dealing with that issue and he knows that all of that has you bent over and has caused you to look like you're not even a child of God. Sometimes we let the weight of the world and the situation and the circumstance deform us from understanding that we already got the victory, that we've already I got 
to fix it. Yeah. 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 You said you want to walk in freedom, baby. Yeah. 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 Doubt and disbelief can hinder the power of God from flowing through you. Yeah. Not studying the word of God, not being diligent in seeking him and his word will bound you up yeah. and cause the power of God to skip over you. You said you wanted to be free, right? Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's already paid the price for us, church. Yes. Yes. And as children of God, we have got to learn how to represent him. We are ambassadors. We are priests. Kings and queens. And we go around looking like the The truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord knows I am not trying to put down anybody's situation or circumstance, yes. but you said you wanted to be free. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. That's what you said. You got to learn how to get in this word, uh -huh. study it, and dig out the word that goes right to your situation. Uh -huh. You got to spend on your knees, get you a secret place, since I got a closet, and the presence of God is there, get in that closet, and start pleading the blood of Jesus, telling the devil you got to go, Spirit! And it's taking some massive 
freedom. Somebody has got to make the devil out of a liar. Right now, as women, we got to realize God is trying to do something in the kingdom. And so he's speaking to women. He wants you to know how significant you are. He wants you to stop talking about, oh, uh, I got my mama's attitude. <laughs> Stop sugarcoating it. Stop talking about it. Oh, God. It's, it's, that's, that's just sister so and so. She liked that all the time. Got to stop sugarcoating and understand that we can't really walk in freedom and possess all the privileges.
We have to be operating in the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. So we ask that we repent today for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the last highlight, and I'm done. God bless you. On the other side of our focal scripture, Jesus starts talking about the kingdom and the parables of the mustard seed and the east. Mm -hmm. In which the significance of both parables is to let us know that the power of both is built in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both work quietly from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And likewise, the power of the kingdom of God is built in. And it works quietly from the inside out That's right. to change people's hearts and to use our lives to make a difference in this world. I don't know what you came out this evening for, but I know I was on an assignment for righteousness. Righteousness is calling out, going to and fro in the land. Because in order to be really free, we got to get unbound. What is bounding you today? Time to really examine. We can blame the devil all day long. Truthfully, it's something within that has not been dealt with. And when Jesus was on the cross, all of that was nailed there for us. Bitterness, temptation, hatred, unforgiveness, guilt, addiction, lust, envy, greed, religion, fear, worry, doubt. It was all nailed there. But we keep picking it up. We keep applying it to our lives, to our decisions, to our choices. And God wants us to be free. So today, what God wants us to leave this place understanding. Not understanding, proclaiming out of our mouths. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. You've got to proclaim your victory. You've got to proclaim your freedom. It's got to come from you. And so I say on this day that this has been more of a blessing to me than for you. So I realize I've got to proclaim some things out of my mouth. Lord, I trust you. Watch the miracles come. Watch what he'll do. He's waiting for you. We keep thinking, we waiting for God. God waiting for us. He's waiting on us. And so, first admit it. You got to admit it. You really have to admit it. Lord, I got some issues. I can't lie about it no more. I can't lie about it no more. I got some stuff going battling. Because this enemy wants to stop me from writing that book. Want to stop me from building the learning centers. He want to stop me from bringing the kingdom of God. He wants to stop this church from building those centers that's going to bring folks in and teach them what.
just want every woman in here to know. That he wouldn't have brought me in here unless he knew that somebody was bound by something that's holding you back from being all that God has called you to be. You got to set yourself free and know that God has great things in store for you. Just trust him. Just believe him. His word is true. So when firm we are no more, I make that declaration today for the women of this church to join with your pastor. Free. Because there's great work to be done. Great work. Now with all hearts and minds of clear. Pray, Father God, it's in the matchless, miraculous name of your son, Jesus, that we come before you, God, just thanking you for your awesome presence, your awesome power. God, I just thank you in advance for every heart that was pricked here to sit. And I speak to the enemy and I tell him to leave this word alone. It shall fall on fertile ground and it shall produce fruit. The transform a mind, the fruit of talent, the fruit of vision, the fruit to just want to hunger and thirst after righteousness, the fruit of desiring the things of God and to be bound no more. God, I thank you in advance for every shackle loose, God, for every captive set free. It's in the great, mighty name of Jesus that we thank you in advance for what you've done and for what you're about to do. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And in his name I say amen.